Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about sounding rockets. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck we are talking about. We are talking about something that is called, also called uh, a research rocket. So basically it's a small puppy. It's not a big Saturn V, it's not Falcon 9, it's not PSLV, it's not GSLV. It's a small puppy, it's a small boy. Now the whole idea of this system is not orbital. It's not supposed to put a satellite or a CubeSat or something like that in orbit. That's not the uh, aim of this puppy. The whole point, the whole reason this exists is suborbital ballistic flight. Basically, uh, you are throwing something in space. That's all you are doing. Now height can be adjusted depending on the payload requirement or something like that. so you can throw something above 45 kilometer to let's say 400 kilometer that's up to you but it's not gonna do an orbit not even one whole orbit it's not doing an orbit it's just doing a ballistic trajectory and depending on your uh, requirement you can uh, tune how far it travels basically you can make it so it like you launch it in one you know lesser desert it will land uh, the payload will land in the desert itself it won't like you know travel very far you can do that and generally the payload requirements uh, basically payload capability of these rockets are generally under uh, you know 0.5 tons basically 400 kilo and that's also on the upper end most rockets are like you know few kilograms and the selling point of this puppy, the main USP, it's low cost. It's very, very cheap compared to millions of dollars to less than a million dollars. Now, how the heck this puppy works? Generally, it's a multi-stage rocket. While it's a multi-stage, does not have enough oomph to do orbit. While you can have two-stage rocket and easily do orbit, this puppy cannot do that. But it can do, uh, you know, ballistic kind of system. And most of them, almost 90% of the time, are solid boosters. They are not using a fancy liquid system. They are generally cheap, reliable, simple solid system. They are inefficient for large payloads. But for this small thing, they are far more efficient. However, sometimes people do try to make them out of liquid fuel. But in those scenarios, what we People are doing is they are testing their liquid engine they're testing their uh, you know other systems so basically the rocket is being tested rather than uh, the ideal use case so rock if you are want to test your rocket basically you want to test your vacuum nozzle or gimbling system you have to test it on a rocket test stand is like good but you have to do actual thing in the real life now you have to understand that military many times have surplus of supplies simply because think of this way military ordered something let's say give 100 uh, you know of this rocket i ordered in 2000 so let's say by 2005 you got all 100 rockets here's the after it's supposed to be in your uh, active service for 30 years okay cool everything is fine everything is dandy but here's the after 10 years 20 years life still left uh, you realize uh, military contracts come around like dude we have something much better which is like you know advanced technology with better targeting system less uh, susceptibility to electronic hanging you have to replace your system because again you don't want your missiles to be hacked by someone else so they have to replace so you will have a scenario where like old system which is powerful oomphish rocket reliable stable system but they have to be done I mean, like you know dealt with like they have to replace it so many times those become surplus now if nobody buys it what military will they, they will put in a place and and go boom on that so that's very wasteful so nasa was like hey you have a lot of boom candidates let us take care of that boom candidate and we'll make something useful out of that so almost all government from uh, china india to uh, you know russia almost every tom dick and harry does this in sounding rocket where you can literally find sounding rocket uh, like the actual motor the actual chemical part of that that is literally a military rocket or a surplus system not all the time there are some companies who are like sold job hey i make solid booster for sounding rocket itself but many times you will find there surplus military equipment now because it's a simple system because it's supposed to be cheap it's uh, and it's not going for like you know advanced uh, orbital uh, you know insertion and all that jazz it's simple what does that mean that means it generally does not have a gimbal so rocket engine it's a lot just like that it's not doing this it's not gimbling so to achieve some level of stability generally they have huge fins and this time uh, the fins are actually useful fins not the like you know big rockets used to have fins in uh, you know v2 eras but uh, they were not practical or those kind of speeds this are useful basically it's a miniature missile so fins are very useful and sometimes if they have to send very far away and they have to make sure they nail the trajectory spin stabilization is also used so they will have the fin the moment it uh, you know picks up speed it will angle the fin and it will start spinning it's it almost becomes like a, a basically bullet so that's how we stabilize this but it's a very simple it's just like throwing a rock in space so what kind of size we are talking about generally this puppy only puts a payload in space on a ballistic trajectory for one minute to 10 minutes it's not supposed to like you know 30 minute 50 minute arcs it's not meant for that generally 10 minutes now again depending on your requirement and if you have really shallow ballistic angle you can achieve like you know a few minutes multiple minutes uh, 20 30 minutes in orbit generally you can't do that easily but if you want that you can do that but generally it's 10 minutes and 10 minutes of awesomeness you have to do things and uh, 
because of the requirement because of the cost cutting it's generally small you did not spend too much money on that and it does allow remote launch capability that is very critical aspect of it. that means let's say you are studying atmosphere in Siberia and you need to figure out like what's the upper atmosphere exactly at this moment in time people will launch a rocket for that you are studying uh, coastal environment you will launch a rocket right from there just to study the exact environment on top of that so people do that for uh, regular reasons so it's inherently designed in such a way that it can be remotely launched without requiring you know super advanced sound dampening system the sound on this puppy would be annoying it's not gonna be like you know pleasant and sometimes they do sound dampening especially if they have a residential area nearby for reducing noise complaint most of the time you will not see it now generally the diameter of these puppies they are less than one meter they are generally measured in 74 millimeters 80 millimeters again they are solid motors uh, from a military kind of era that kind of lineage you can easily see they rarely touch one meter rarely so this is the whole point of it. It's a small, efficient system that can be launched from anywhere. Like there are systems that launches from a rock, uh, basically barge, uh, island or something like that. You don't need advanced infrastructure for this puppy. Now, what is the exact use of this? Like we have big rockets. So why the heck we want to make small? It's in one unique way. It ends up in a point where it can go between basically 84 kilometers. Uh, from sea level to 145 kilometer now you're like why is that zone is so interesting well if you want to understand environment uh, that's the goldilocks zone and here's the funny thing weather balloon does not reach that high and satellite cannot go that low so that band is a dead zone you cannot do anything in that zone so what the hell are you gonna do sounding rockets like it's not that people are stupid that they are using sounding rockets it's just that that's the only equipment that goes in that zone now you know like what happens if you uh, normal rocket does cross that that's the whole point it does cross it the problem is because it's meant for orbital velocity it's going through that done yeah yeah uh, good luck good luck collecting data like if you think 10 minutes is short that would be like so reality is this is the only tool that can do that now because of the basically a requirement for atmospheric investing that's a thing we have to understand we have to understand our atmospheres and satellite provides a, like you know good data but they're not very precise because again they do not they are not that close they are not in the atmosphere so to say so this sort of uh, you know sounding rockets they are launched constantly constantly like almost every day you can be damn sure somebody somewhere for atmospheric reason is launching uh, basically solid uh, rocket motor and uh, you know sounding rockets and all that like isro has around 3000 plus sound ro uh, sounding rocket launches so you can be damn sure like nasa is like yeah one week this 10 week that common common it's a normal thing because for atmospheric research this puppy goes into that golden north zone and for a few minutes it stays there so it's a very very uh you know valuable and it's a cheap space testing basically you can test everything uh, you know till your heart's desire in a vacuum chamber but it's no way near the you know brutality of actual space launch and actual space and these puppies they have very high acceleration so if you want to make a cube set that is damn robust and you want to test it this puppies are very good because some of them have because they are so light they accelerate so damn quickly they exceed 6g they're like whoosh, gone they're not like smooth and gentle like, as like falcon 9 it's gonna pick up speed no 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 they're like you launch whoosh, gone so that is like very good testing market for that like you want to launch a cubesat you want to test it out you can test it for quite cheaply in this you want to study atmosphere quite cheaply so it does have a niche use case in that band from 48 kilometers up to 145 kilometer so what we can expect in the future now this is the interesting part uh, liquid fueled rocket at this point in time are reaching mass production now mass production is kind of very weird tool we humans yield because it can make something super complex super cheap like for example uh, basically uh, hackintosh guy uh, hack, uh, hack smith hack smith is a guy who wanted to build a basically tesla model uh, that uh, cyber truck he made a half scale model here's the that ended up costing more than the full size one how the heck that happens prototypes always cost that much money when single person is doing single thing it always costs that kind of money mass production you can take something ludicrously complex for example your mobile phone which has a, like a display camera uh, battery charging system and god knows how many other, other things and it all can be packaged and given to you in less than like you know hundred dollars to two hundred dollars but here's the if you try to uh, you know not mass produce that each of those devices will cost ludicrous amount of money for example audio equipments you will be like blown away how expensive audio equipments are like microphone cost as much as a freaking a car and i'm not making that up like that's normal that's like oh that's just that's a jump change kind of microphone you're talking about because it's not mass produce it's not something like you know millions of those are made so liquid rocket motors at this point in time once we have reached a like you know battery power system once we have reached a 3d printing system once we have reached the like you know recyclable and reusable kind of scenario it's being reached that mass production is like you know hundreds of them are being made in a year so 
cost is going down drastically so that gap between sounding rocket versus a proper liquid rocket that's not that much as it used to be like it's very close at this point in time and another aspect all these companies be it electron rocket be it uh, astro rocket all those people are targeting a very crucial uh, data point also which is called lead time basically you pick up the phone it's like bro i need a rocket and they're like yeah wait for six months they want to shrink that wait for six months they want to shrink it now for sounding rocket it can be done very quickly like uh, that shrinking time can be done under a month these puppies they are trying to aim for one week basically you call them up they will tell okay if they are pre-booked uh, they don't have a free slot that's a, a totally different thing but they are trying to narrow that puppy down it's like you know you pick up the phone their end game is like you pick up the phone tomorrow i'm launching if whether permits so that cost is coming down lead time is shrinking and you can underpower this puppy basically you can go to electron rockets like bro i need to use it as a sounding rocket they're like okay no problem just remove the second stage Ta-da! you don't have to do it just remove the second stage you got it done no problem and if especially if it's a recoverable through a parachute you can even recover your whole uh, payload experiment so lot of capabilities are there you don't always have to like you know do multi-stage rocket you can just like single stage done awesome and sounding rocket might just become at that point in time just a testing project basically you have a candidate who want to like learn the actual rocketry development missile uh, developments of projects and all that so yeah build a sounding rocket like that's a uh, very easy to actually build actually test get a license clearance for on all that jazz so you can do that so it could still remain as a useful tool as a lego kind of system where you want to like do you want to build a rocket that's how you start that's like the first thing you figure it out so there's a very uh, bright future in those kind of events but i do not see it as continuing like not of course uh, no i'm not talking about 2020 i'm talking about like 2040 so to say so by 2040 i can easily see uh, sounding rockets being like you know as it's just a tool that people launch like you know school universities they have, have get together and have a you know sounding rocket launch not as a like you know professional tool because these rock, uh, liquid rocket systems are reaching that price parity point so this is what we have in the store in the future i could be wrong so this was my presentation on sounding rockets i hope you liked it learn from that in that scenario please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra appointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching